Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have z cubed plus z squared plus z equals negative 1 and we're going to be solving for z values. So we have a number the sum of whose cube its square and itself equals negative 1. Is that possible? Think about it, try to guess, and now we'll check. I'll be presenting two methods, and you'll see how we can proceed with the methods because I got some results from Wolfram Alpha. I hope, I hope you know that page, the website that allows you to calculate these kinds of things, but sometimes it fails, but that's okay. Anyways, there are different ways you can write this expression or equation. Obviously, the first one is not very helpful because factoring out a z is not really going to help you. But that equation could be written in different forms, obviously. Second one is good, but since it's the second one, that's going to be our second method. And the third one is going to be our first method because we don't have the third method. Maybe there's a third way to solve it. I don't know. Please let me know if you do. Now, the th I'm going to start with the third one, and that's going to be my first method. So what is the th first first method. The first method is using the cubic formula. Is that a formula? Yes. For cubics and quintics, I mean, did I say quintics? No. I mean cortics and cubics and quadratics. Linear is easy, but unfortunately not anything above and including quintics. Anyway, so here's what we can do. Replace z plus one third with y and don't question y. And you're going to get y cubed plus 2 over 3y equals negative 20 over 27. So I subtracted the constant from both sides because that's what the cubic formula requires or necessitates. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write the formula underneath so we can kind of compare. a plus b cubed minus, I think that was a minus sign, 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. Hopefully you know this identity because I use that a lot. If not, then it's easy to check. Anyways, so from here, I'm going to, first of all, I want to set y equal to a plus b. So it's going to be a plus b to the third power. So, which means this number right here is equal to the coefficient of y, because this is y and this is y. And that happens to be two-thirds. So this is two-thirds, and this is negative 20 over 27. That, guess what that, that's going to give you? If negative 3ab is two-thirds, multiply both sides by negative one-third, you're going to get ab equals negative two-ninths. Great. And then a cubed plus b cubed equals negative 20 over 27. We kind of got like two equations. Is that a cubic system? No. It's actually quadratic because I can go ahead and cube both sides. a cubed b cubed equals negative 8 over what was 8 cubed? I think it was 729, right? 81 times 9. And then now I can go ahead and do the following. Replace b cubed with negative 20 over 27 minus a cubed. And then if you plug that in here, you're going to get a to the third and a to the sixth. And then you can go ahead and set a cubed equal to c. And you'll get a quadratic in c. Hopefully you see what I'm talking about. And then by solving that quadratic equation, you're going to get the values of c, which is a cubed or b cubed. By cube rooting them, you're going to get two solutions. Cube root of the first solution, uh, let's call that c sub 1, and cube root of the second solution, cube root of c sub 2, is going to give you the value of y, which is equal to z plus 1 third, and then by subtracting 1 third, you're going to get the value of z, and then hopefully you can find the other solutions by polynomial division. But as you can see, this is a pretty painful method, and this is kind of like an overkill for this problem. You'll see why in a little bit, but I still wanted to show you, because if you get any like arbitrary cubic equation and you have to solve it, you can definitely use the cubic formula. Make sense? I hope it does. The rest should be pretty straightforward, left as an exercise for the reader and the audience. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. 
All right, so our equation was z cubed plus z squared plus z equals negative 1. Again, try to guess. Could z be 1? 1 plus 1 plus 1 doesn't work. Could z be negative 1? Negative 1 plus 1 minus 1. And yes, it does. Awesome, we found one solution. Great. This is actually not the second solution, but I'm just kind of giving you a little quick idea here. z equals negative 1 worked, but is that the only solution? Obviously not. This is cubic. So what we can do is we can actually rearrange the terms of this polynomial as follows. I can go ahead and kind of write this as z cubed. And then I want to get um, z plus 1 as a factor, right? How can I get z plus 1? Easy. You just factor out z squared, right? And that's going to give you z plus 1. And then, of course, there's another one. Uh-oh, that's actually the second method. But we didn't have to know that z was equal to negative 1. So let's just forget it. Suppose you didn't check. You should always check, but pretend you didn't know this. Now here's what we're going to do. Add 1 to both sides. And make it a full, full cubic. Great. Now here's what we're going to do. This is factorable by grouping. Let's make two groups. This one and this one. Take out z squared. And then now z plus 1 is a common factor. All right. And then we're going to set each factor equal to 0 to find the solutions. If z plus 1 is equal to 0, we're going to get z equals negative 1. And if z squared plus 1 is equal to 0, then z squared equals negative 1. Remember the number or the numbers whose square equals negative 1 or whose square equals negative 1. And that will be i, right? The infamous imaginary number. So z can be i or negative i. A lot of times people say, what's the square root of negative 1? i. Well, there are two square roots i and negative i because when you square both or either one you get negative one so there are two solutions and a total of three solutions to this equation z equals i z equals negative i and z equals negative one now you could definitely proceed a little differently once you realize uh oh negative one is a solution you could also do the following you could just do a long division divide this by z plus one z goes into z cubed z squared times, so on and so forth. It's going to be the exact same thing. Not too hard. It's pretty straightforward. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.